<sighs> but I could talk about Audrey all day long, by the way. But anyway. But, um, yeah, Audrey, um, she did get captured, but she didn't have to go into concentration camp because, unfortunately for somebody else, but fortunately for her, she was saved. She was in the back of this, of the car, or the, the, whatever it was, um, to go to a train station. But fortunately, a Jewish man walked by and the Nazis went to harass him. And Audrey snuck out of the car and the truck and they both run away. And she ran into a, a house that was, you know, ruined. And it wasn't until later that she was, it was her real, it was actually her house. So, um... She was a ballet dancer before the war, and during the war, she danced for the underground to keep their spirits up and raise money for the people that were in hiding. Um, she's like 14. But she, they couldn't applaud, and she said that that silence was the was was the most important was the most wonderful sound she ever heard in her life. Um so just knowing that she was doing something for them. So then the war ended on her birthday. <laughs> her sixteenth birthday. Um so yeah. Uh and um there's a lot of history. I love it. I love all the history on her because she was amazing. <laughs> um but uh, skipping ahead a lot in her career, um, she um, was a bad, like I said, she was a ballet dancer before the war. And after the war, she was so sick and so tired that she couldn't dance anymore. She was too old, too, so she couldn't dance. And so she was trying to find other ways to make it, I guess. Um, but, uh, she was a model, and I don't really know how she became a model, but <laughs> she did some stage stuff, and, um, then she became a model, and then from that, she, um, I don't know, that's like, uh, I don't know how she went from model to New York on to be on Broadway. I don't really know how that happened, really, but she... Her first to real like gig in America was Gigi on Broadway, and then from that she got offered to um, do modeling in America and then movies and it just like all came from like one thing after another lit up to her acting career, and she always said that everything happened to her without her ever seeking it, and that's pretty much true. She didn't ask for it. She didn't go out on audition for these things. People just came to her, um, which is cool. <laughs> Have that kind of power, I guess. But uh, she didn't really understand all the hype around her, though. But I did. Um, and her first movie was. Uh, Monte Carlo Baby, which is one that she never talked about because it apparently was awful. Um, you can't even find it anywhere, not in print, but she said it was awful. Um, so whenever they thought she talked about her first movie, it was on the holiday because basically it was. Um, Monte Carlo Baby was low budget, it wasn't that good, but when the holiday was, um, you know, <laughs> um, the better movie obviously. And Gregory Peck, oh this is in the Roman holiday behind the scenes. I'm not gonna talk about that one. But um, she did win her first Oscar ever. Her first and last Oscar of her career, which I'm upset she didn't win more, but she won one. Her speech was the cutest thing ever. I just, whenever I watch it, it makes me so happy. Like, she was so shy. She went up on the stage. She was about to go the wrong way. And they were like, no, no, come over here. And she like, she was so cute. Um, if you want to watch it, I think it's on YouTube. But I just, I love her speech. Um, 
basically she says, I want to thank everybody. And I just, I don't know. I wish more people did that, get it over with faster. <laughs> but, um, yeah, like I said, I could talk about her forever. And, um, so I'm going to stop this because it's going to get a little bit long. So I'm going to continue.